Ponyo is one of my favorite animated films. Directed by Hayao Miyazaki and released in 2008, this adaptation of The Little Mermaid is one of the most unique out there and currently stands as the fifth highest grossing anime film of all time. The movie is about a magical shape-shifting goldfish named Ponyo who mischievously escapes from her father's lab under the sea and meets this five-year-old boy named Sosuke. Most of the film's runtime is spent seeing the world through their innocent and curious eyes. And boy is the world wondrously beautiful. The tireless team at Studio Ghibli really shows off their veteran skill here. Ponyo is an absolutely gorgeous film on every front. It opens with heavenly orchestration on the bottom of this glorious and fantastical sea that is home to all kinds of marine life, both real and fictional. From the water that trickles down Sasuke's face after Ponyo steals his piece of ham to the enormous crashing waves swallowing everything in its path, the way water is animated throughout the film is genuinely impressive. The characters' flat textures and simple designs cast against beautiful watercolor painted backgrounds make this a film where any moment captured could be a wallpaper. It's an animated delight, a powerful display of what traditional animation could achieve. Ponyo is also known to be Studio Ghibli's most childish film by far. While Whisper of the Heart thoughtfully tackles the gruesome yet fulfilling process of creating art, and the tale of Princess Kaguya is a beautiful commentary on women's struggles to meet standards in a patriarchal society, Ponyo is seeing two children hang out. It's seeing a magical goldfish playfully spew water at people she doesn't like. It's Lisa dangerously driving in a cute pink car. It's appreciating the most adorable kids ever, going on their own little sea adventure and sleeping so soundly on a green couch. Ponyo is a wonderful children's film that sets a good example of what kids should watch with their families. It's such a delightful and wholesome experience for kids but it's so artistic and so well crafted that adults would find something magical within it too. There's a lot of love for this film online, not from kids, but from really passionate fans of animation. Donald Rositano talks about the film taking inspiration from the painting Ophelia and how it was hand drawn frame by frame instead of using cell animation creating a world that feels natural, fluid, and alive. Han Il Som on their blog appreciates the film's organic design and architecture. The characters' designs aren't based on anime stereotypes, but instead reflect the weird and colorful world they're in. I also appreciate this anonymous person's essay for school probably about Ponyo being about sacrificial love. Sasuke's father in the film is a sailorman who can't spend much time with his family because he has to make ends meet. And at the end of the film, Ponyo has to sacrifice her life as a mermaid so that she can fully become human and be with Sasuke. In the wake of the earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan on March 11, 2011, Susan Napier talks about Ponyo's overt commentary on climate change how Sasuke and Ponyo represent the younger generation who urgently need to appreciate and save our crumbling natural world, unlike the generation that came before. These articles and essays are a testament to just how much is lying underneath the film's surface, how much thought, creativity, time, and effort was put into making Ponyo something truly special. These days, even though there are still a ton of good animated shows and movies for kids, a lot of what children watch today is content that's algorithmically tailored for them. I don't really have a huge problem with these, they've cracked the code and I bet they're trying to earn a living, but some of them are just so empty and robotic and lifeless. 
it's saddening to see this mediocrity seep into some animated shows and films too. We got really mediocre reboots of Powerpuff Girls and Kung Fu Panda that are just shells of their former selves. There's an entire animated movie franchise named Norm of the North that's so obviously cheap and terrible, but still made money somehow. Although it's nice to eat junk food once in a while, our future generation will literally collapse if all they watch is Spider-Man x Frozen videos. Meanwhile, Ponyo doesn't treat kids as the lowest common denominator. It doesn't see children as uneducated babies with poor taste to exploit for money. It's a film that celebrates and acknowledges the child within all of us. It respects kids by offering them the best they could give. Even though Ponyo might not be for you, there is no denying the effort put into it. One thing I love about Ghibli is that they don't just do it for the money. They make animated films to push the medium forward, to experiment and to innovate, sometimes at the cost of their own wallet. But Ponyo's splash at the box office shows that you can make quality animated films and also make a profit at the same time. You can have your cake and eat it too. If I were to describe this film in three words, they would be imaginative, lighthearted, and adorable. It makes sense given the film's colorful animation style and its insistence on appreciating the beauty of everything, whether big or small. The wonderful score composed by Joe Hisaichi is a big factor to the film's positive tone too, always maintaining a sense of adventure and silliness even during the movie's most tense and fragile moments. Ponyo is probably the cutest movie I've ever seen. There's a scene where she sees a baby crying, and so she runs on water, and they rub faces, and she ends up making the baby laugh, and it's just the best. There are a ton of scenes just as adorable as this spread throughout the film. There's a wholesome scene where Sasuke gives the old ladies origami he made for them and one where he communicates with his dad on the boat through flashing lights. But I think my favorite scenes in the movie are of Ponyo discovering the human world. Since Ponyo starts the movie as a fish, she doesn't really know human etiquette. The things we see as normal and boring are completely new adventures for Ponyo, and it's an absolute joy to see her discover and experience things for the first time, like drinking tea. The movie captures childhood curiosity and discovery so well. Almost everything impresses these two kids, and it's really wonderful. Everyone's favorite scene in this movie is of Ponyo and Sasuke eating instant noodles, and it really shows how the film can elevate normal experiences to a magical status. Ponyo shows the power of animation, not only to be a gateway into fantastical faraway lands, but as a fresh lens to appreciate what is already right before our eyes. Ponyo and Sasuke aren't just curious and jolly though, they're also very energetic and naughty, which just makes this movie an even more accurate depiction of what being a child is. Although it's probably a turnoff for a lot of people, I love how lighthearted the movie is, how it's a tribute and celebration of childhood fun. Ponyo doesn't try to be a plot-heavy masterpiece, but lets its characters joyfully wander and experience its gorgeous and beautifully illustrated world. But this world is actually crumbling before our characters' eyes. When you actually internalize what's going on in the film, it's a tragedy.
In the movie, Ponyo's father, who used to be human, doesn't want to let Ponyo experience the human world. The world that wreaks havoc and destroys life under the sea. Ponyo disobeys out of interest and love for Sasuke. And her second escape to meet Sasuke unleashes an apocalyptic disaster. It creates a storm that rivals the one in the story of Noah's Ark. The clouds darken and the rushing water tears through everything in its sight until almost nothing is left. What's worse is that Sasuke's dad, being a sailorman, is swept away by this monstrous typhoon and as a result can't get in touch with his family over the radio. And yet, despite the horrible external environment, the film's tone never deters from positivity. It's why the movie is so weird for many people. Everyone from the two kids to Lisa and the elderly women at the nursing home react to this catastrophe without any emotional devastation at all. But that's why I love the film. The characters are just so above everything, so above their outward situation, and are able to find joy, genuine excitement and thrill in the midst of it. To be honest, I can't deny the fact that childhood naivety is partly what saves Ponyo and Sasuke. We see the world through their innocent eyes, and everything is colorful and beautiful, from the extraordinary sea creatures to the simple act of lighting a fire. But I also think what saves the characters in the film is that they have something to hold on to. Whether it's a sense of duty to their occupation, hope that everything will be okay in the end, or love for their friends and family, all the characters in Ponyo find a reason to push through. And it's absolutely amazing. As much as I want to end this video wishing that you have a good day, it's something I can't guarantee. Life's rocky and unpredictable and confusing and scary. But I hope that you would find a genuine source of joy that you can turn to. A fulfilling hobby, a beloved group of friends, or an uplifting piece of art that doesn't just help you weather through life's tough storms, but gives you an immense amount of excitement and joy that assures you that the life you're living is a special one. My name is Joshua C. Today, I am by the sea, and I hope to see you in the next one.